Well, the Irish have their quarterback, Mike Kenny Menchie, the former Pittsburgh commit, as we kind of expected, verbally committed to the Fighting Irish on Tuesday. And Mike, kind of give us some of the details of this quick turnaround from being a Pittsburgh decommit to now joining this Fighting Irish class. Yeah, I want to player decommits from a school and sets up the official visit typically looks really good for Notre Dame, right? Saw that with Caleb Smith a couple weeks ago, decommits from Texas Tech. He's taken an official to Notre Dame that, that weekend. We haven't seen him commit yet, so it's not a foolproof thing, but um, yeah, it was it was pretty obvious that uh, Minchie was trending heavily towards Notre Dame, and the official visit this past weekend for the Boston College game just really had to be a disaster. For, for Notre Dame not to uh, to win the recruitment. So it went well, um, really clicked with the Notre Dame commits who were on campus, but also Tommy Reese, Marcus Freeman, Chad Bowden, all those Notre Dame staffers did a really nice job. So even one source told me that like he is just a perfect fit at Notre Dame and it would have been a stunner if he would have went to Pittsburgh just because of, I've, I've talked about it, when you have the word Pope in your high school, that's typically a good sign for Notre Dame. Um, and um yeah, here, here we are. So what stands out when you watch him on tape? What makes him, as you said, a really good fit for Notre Dame? Yeah, I mean, again, off the field, it's it, it, he's that perfect culture locker room kind of fit that you look for. On the field, big fan, big, big fan. He's got the functional mobility. Like, for folks watching on YouTube, see that play? Like, he is... Uh, he's no Lamar Jackson, but he's also no Jack Cohn. Like he is, is a really good athlete. Again, not a speedy guy, but his build is sturdy. That's the word that his private quarterbacks coach told me. So, you know, thick lower body, um, well built kid at six two and a half, two hundred fifteen pounds, um, and then the number one trait for him is just that accuracy and that throw right there we just saw is probably my favorite. I'm actually going to rewind it for folks watching on YouTube. Um, just how he is able to see something downfield that is coming and then just a quick little sidestep to buy himself a little bit more time to then deliver a little bit off platform, a, a dime for a touchdown. That is Kenny Minchie in a nutshell. The pocket awareness for him is, I, I, I think for just the general football fan watching this, you just see the football leaving the arms and it's a perfect ball right to the receiver right but it's the little things that separate a quarterback from being just a guy to an elite 11 finalist and an all-american and a four-star and now a notre dame commit the pocket presence um just the overall overall awareness and feel of the game of football that that's that's kenny Minchie um to a t I, i'm very impressed with just him mechanically the um the again the awareness the accuracy um and the overall feel for the game he's a really good gift for Notre Dame he reminds me just slightly of Deshaun Kaiser a little bit by the way he stands in the pocket well Mike this is a guy that got an offer from Notre Dame over the summer said no to Notre Dame so what do you think changed between July and this visit to Boston College, was it Notre Dame being persistent, continuing to try to talk to him, trying to change his mind? What do you think it was? Hey, Darren, power in Notre Dame. We say that a lot of times, and I, I really think it was true here. I, when I interviewed him on uh, the days are running together, so we're recording this Tuesday. I talked to him Monday um, afternoon about his commitment, and I said, I, I, I said, Kenny, let me just lay out how I've seen this come together. And you tell me if I'm wrong. And, you know, I was like, look, Notre Dame offered in late July, but then August is a dead period and your season's your senior season starts. So you're not really going to be focusing on recruiting, right? Focusing on that senior season. And you can't take a visit in the month of August again, because of that dead period. And then he gets injured a few games into a season. So then his focus is on rehab. So he's got that Pittsburgh commitment locked in. He's feeling fine with that recruiting and a potential flip to Notre Dame is the last thing on his mind. It is senior year and, and getting over this shoulder injury, which was on his throwing shoulder, but I'm told no, no long-term concerns there. He should be just fine. Um, but uh, yeah, Darren, he just goes through senior season. And the, the key for Notre Dame here was to not give up. 
Um, they stayed on him. Just kept consistent, nothing overbearing, or it wasn't too much or too little. It's just every week, every two weeks, Tommy Reese, Marcus Street, and Chad Bowden texting or checking in, texting him here and there to just keep things warm for when he was ready to, you know, potentially open things up. And um, just a couple weeks ago, Minchie had a conversation with with Tommy Reese and um then she just said all right i'm just and so this is kind of a long way to answer your question you just got a text and he was like all right i think it's time to consider this so his parents were pushing for notre dame um of course they were going to be on board with pittsburgh um but minchi uh you know talked to them about notre dame and i think they kind of ended that call that conversation with his family saying all right let's listen to what notre dame has to say here and it moved obviously very fast from them darren well, I understand that for the average Joe, the star system is a really good way for them to understand how good this player can be at the collegiate level. And I know he's a four star, but let me go beyond that as I wrap up my Minshew conversation with you. Here's what I like to know. When you look at the tape and when you know the young man, you get to know him a little bit. I want to know, does he project to be a starter? Does he project to be just a backup? Could he be an All-American? So beyond the stars, as you look at it, in your personal opinion, if he had to start in the next couple of years, you believe he's the type of kid that can start? Oh, absolutely. Obviously, yeah, he can start. Yeah, for sure. I I, I think he could – I don't think he goes into next year, you know, as no. a favorite for the job. But I, I think that if if Notre Dame were put in a situation where Minchie needed to play as a true freshman, as and he's enrolling early, like I think he could, I think he could do a good job. Okay. But the, in terms of, uh, you know, is he an All American or is he a one year? You know, come on, come on, Darren, <laughs> come on, Darren. Your guess is as good as mine, and so is Joe Schmo's. Like it's that's very tough um, to you know, to kind of gauge at this point, but you just kind of go through the tools, right? And they seem to be all there. I mean, you're, if you're going to criticize his game, it's, it's, you're nitpicking. Okay. Could he be a couple inches taller at like, you know, be six, four, six, five. Sure. You know, could he also run a four, <laughs> four? Sure. You know, that that's not him. Um, I, could he throw it, you know, with a bit more velocity and be able to throw it 60 yards. Sure. Um, you, you can improve everywhere, but the accuracy, the pocket presence, the leadership qualities, he looks pretty good to me there. Okay. I like it. Good analysis there. Mike Singer, Notre Dame football recruiting insider, blue and gold illustrated blue and gold.com. So Minchie's the 23 quarterback CJ cars, the 24 quarterback His high school season is over. Give me a synopsis. How good of a year did CJ Carr have? Pretty good. Yeah. Um, I, I'll actually pull up his stats and I can tell you them um, as we are here. But uh, he had a couple of stinkers in there. But uh, otherwise, I mean, just, just fantastic. Um, consistent throughout the season. Um, tw- 222 of 326. That's 68 percent completion. Um, 2,685 yards, 26 touchdowns, just five picks, and that's across 11 games. Um, yeah, the the his worst game of the season was six of 25 for 88 yards. That's the one I was at, <laughs> um, and I was told politely to never come back. And then the next week he had a, a a fine game, but just doesn't quite compare to some of the games he's had, like 13 of 14 for 251 yards and five touchdowns. So, um. Yeah, he, he's holding himself to a high standard when he has games like that. But overall, Darren, CJ had a, a, a really good year, in my opinion. Um, the back-to-back recruiting here for Notre Dame. I've talked about this in our, our Blue and Gold YouTube ch- um, channel. Um, Kenny Minchie is the number 14 quarterback per the on three consensus in the in the country. Carr is the number five in the in the 2024 class. So if you add that up, that's 19, right? Average it, it comes to nine and a half. So their average quarterback ranking nationally is nine and a half between those two. I looked back at all of Notre Dame's recruiting classes since 2007, um, and that is that nine and a half is the highest for back to back recruiting classes going back to um, Gunnar Keel and Malik Zaire. Um, and I know those guys didn't quite pan out. Um, in a Notre Dame uniform, but that just kind of goes to show that 
how long it's been that Notre Dame has signed. If you're just you, you talked about star rankings, you brought it up, Darren. That just kind of goes how it goes to show how long it's been since Notre Dame has signed guys this highly ranked at the quarterback position. It's and it's another flip. Notre Dame has obviously had a good track record flipping quarterbacks from other schools as well. And they flipped three others in this class: Mookum, Edwards, and Triori, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So yep. And they've had uh, four, I think, four decommit, uh, which is hard for me to remember off the top of my head. They had the running back, Keon Keeley, um, an offensive lineman, flipped to uh, was it USC? Yep. And I think there's one more. Um, so yeah, just hoping for not another one, Darren. That's the that's the that's the goal there for the staff. Just a few weeks to go until the first national signing day.